guys. So it turns out that I am Canadian and a pretty darned proud one too. I really love living in Canada. However, there is a glaring flaw with unconditional patriotism that most people tend to be naive to, and that is thinking that your country is perfect. Obviously, many countries on our planet are awesome, but no single one country is perfect, and Canada, as much as I love it here, is certainly no exception. That being said, I would like to share with you a few of my Canadian culture pet peeves straight from the horse's mouth, eh? Probably the single most ironic kind of Canadian patriot is the fair weather Canadian. These are the people who really only want to live in Canada four months out of the year. Typically, these are also people who will be the most in your face about how hardcore Canadian they are. But then as soon as the snow flies, it's nothing but griping like a bitch for the remaining eight months about how it's too cold and there's too much snow. If you are one of these people, please move to Texas where you can sing praises to George W. Bush while drinking watered down Corona and let me enjoy my real beer and snowy awesomeness in peace. And my next Canadian pet peeve, hockey. Yes, I am Canadian, and I hate hockey like I hate country music. And it wouldn't even be so bad if it wasn't the single most overrated aspect of our culture. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with hockey itself. In moderation. But just once, I want to be able to look at the front page of a newspaper in mid-July without a 3,000 word expose on how good Medano's breakfast tasted or how many sheets of toilet paper it took for him to wipe his ass. If the Canadian media was half as interested in reporting real world events as they are in being in Taylor Hall's backside, I am confident that our average IQ per capita would be at least 10 points higher. Just saying. Another Canadian pet peeve of mine, Quebec. All I have to say on the matter is either GTFO or STFU. Which conveniently brings me to my next point. Selective bilingualism. If you call a government phone number in Canada, by law, they have to repeat everything they say in French. I say we need to take this law a step further and apply it to phone sex lines. Because as ridiculous as they are to begin with, I think it would be hilarious if every loser in the country had to pay $8.99 a minute to listen to, Ooh, you're making me so hot. Ooh, lose me red dancey showed. Yeah, because nothing gets me going like Miss Pepe Le Pew over here having a dyslexic seizure. Moving right along. For those who don't know, a Newfie is someone from the province of Newfoundland. Okay, listen up, Newfies. I like you guys. I really do. But I just can't freaking understand a single word that escapes your mouths. Seriously, take a couple Valium, slow the crap down, and learn what the letter A is. And finally, my number one Canadian pet peeve. Canadian bacon. Seriously, whose brilliant idea was this? If you don't know what Canadian bacon is, here's a hint. It's not remotely close to bacon. Seriously, calling it Canadian bacon makes about as much sense as calling a turban a Chinese fedora. This douchebag of a food masquerades around claiming to be bacon's hot cousin, but is really more like bologna's creepy alcoholic stepdad. If you've never had this poor excuse for a breakfast entree, don't bother. It's pretty much like you left a hot dog in the sun for two days and then ironed it flat. So there you have it, the most critical areas of Canadian culture that, in my first-hand opinion, have the most room for improvement. So thank you for watching, please be sure to do the comment, rate, and subscribe thing, and also be sure to join me next week when I explain why snowblading will get you high on the devil.